Welcome to Prepper Talk Radio. It's uh, we're live here on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. I want to welcome everybody who's uh, going to be joining with us today in our live discussion. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a continuation from last week, as I promised. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the ways to have solutions and mitigate the risks that we talked about and some of the things we shared with that came out in the news that are in the news uh, from our last episode. So stay tuned. And uh, before we jump into that, though, just to remind everybody to hit the like and subscribe button, especially if you're live with us right now, hit the like button. That tells the algorithm that this is a good live to listen to and it shoots it out to more people so that we can have more people watching. The other thing is that go to our website at uh, preppertalkradio.com. We've got our free downloads there. You can join our, our website, uh, pardon me, our email list. Go to uh, Facebook and uh, Facebook. We have uh, our page, Prepper Talk Radio. And then from there, you can click more and then join our group. And our group is Emergency Prep and Self-Reliance. And we have a lot of opportunity there to make to have discussions and back and forth. If you have a question for us that uh, you're, you want to talk about it, uh, anything or you want to ask anything, just shoot us a message on Facebook. We reply to those uh, pretty frequently and pretty quickly. So we've got a lot of uh, questions come to us in the last couple of days that uh, we've been able to get back to you. And we really appreciate you listening and, and uh, all your support that we have. And speaking of that, um, make sure you hit subscribe so that we can get to a thousand subscribers so that we can give away our Jace case, which is the year supply of Jace medical um, uh, antibiotics. And then the five ounce silver bar. Uh, also, if you want to support the show, and we have put up on Amazon at uh, amazon.com slash shop slash Prepper Talk Radio, which will be having a link in the description below. You can go and see my kit, Shane's kit, and Scott's kit, and we're going to be adding things as we go. And if you want to pick up anything that we have in our kits, that helps support the show. So we would really appreciate that if you want to do that as well. So today, um, tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about mitigating risks. So solutions to some of the problems that uh, that happen. And some of the things we talked about, just as a recap from last week, we talked about, or last episode, we talked about the spiritual preparedness that's necessary and what's happening with, uh, with what we saw on public television with the Grammy Awards and, and literally a satanic ritual there. We talked about what happened in Turkey and the absolute horror of a 7.0 earthquake literally crumbling. I, I had one one uh, video I watched. is like somebody was asking, is that a demo? Is that a demolition? Or is that actually an, an earthquake? And it was an earthquake. It looked like a demolition. It was so just, it was like, wow, this is not right or normal. And then what's going on in the Northeast with the cold front? I mean, we got 108, a record, a, a, probably a world record, 108, negative 108 with wind chill. Um, in the northeast, uh, this uh, last couple of days. So the actual uh, world record cold, uh, cold temperatures in uh, Antarctica. I think it's like 167 below, Holy something crap. like that. Something crazy below, crazy cold. But yeah, that was like top of Mount Washington, where the winds just whip. That is known for really, really, really bad weather up there. At least it's not down in the valleys at 108 below. That's I'd that's hate to be crazy. the guy that I'd, I'd hate to be the guy that uh, took that temperature on top of that mountain. <laughs> You know, as a delivery driver who's almost always wearing thermals and is out in negative, you know, two to three degrees here thinking, wow, that sucks. Most of the time it's, you know, 15 to 20 when I get out from the beginning of the day. But I'm like, dude, negative 108. Are you kidding me? I've right? been watching some videos of this town in, in Russia called Yakutia. I think I'm saying okay. that right. Uh, population of like 270,000 people. The average winter temperature is negative 58 degrees. <sighs> what? And it's probably seven At, or eight months. And it, like nine months of winter. Oh, my and, gosh. But, but the thing is, the temperature swings up to even up to 90 plus degrees in the summer. What? Which is crazy. And I think the record low is like negative, like negative 96 or something like that. No, thank so, you. Yeah, that's that's two hundred seventy one thousand crazy I, I people. I feel I feel very grateful for where I live right now. I think I can deal with the uh, slightly negative temperatures. Or you know, right now I've been in the twenties for a while. It's been pretty annoying. But so here's I, here's I, I'm, a, I'm happy with that. Our first a first solution. The first solution for mitigating risk of cold temperatures. Just don't live in that area. There you go. Well, okay. Here's go. the thing, though. You don't live in those areas. Then what? What are the things you're going to go against? Oh well, okay. Now you've got tornadoes. Uh -huh. Oh, let's live in Florida. Now we got hurricanes. We got in Utah. We got earthquakes. Capital of America, if not possibly the world. I don't remember. I think it's Tampa. Australia. Tampa has the most lightning strikes of mm, anywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's that's why it's the Tampa Bay Lightning for the hockey team. Like 
and it's the craziest thing. When I lived there, I actually saw lightning almost horizontal to the ground. What? It's a fireball, I tell you. And I'm like, fireball. what? Is, is this the apocalypse? You know, and it, it was just crazy. There's so much lightning, and it's just like poof, scatter to find something to hit. And I was always asking, why do people have these little ugly metal rods, wiggly rods hanging out of the sides of their cars? Curb feelers. But they're this also static as well. Great for redirecting your lightning. Really? Yeah. Some people have ones that actually drag on the ground. And I was like, what's that yeah. for? And they're like, for lightning. I'm what? like, does that even work? They're like, they say it does. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not trying I'm not, it. I don't want to drag. Yeah, I don't I'm like, I'm good. Either, I'll man. just, you know, stay in my house and hopefully be safe. But so yeah, how do you <laughs> like be prepared for, for lightning? Yeah, you stay out of it first of all. Yeah. Uh, you, you you put a you can put a lightning rod on your house. Right. <laughs> Something like that. That's really good mitigation. Like have uh, fire. What's the number one thing you can do to, to eliminate the chance of a fire? Don't light anything, right? <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah. keep your fuels away from each other. That's why. That's, that's that's why smart. gas stoves are dangerous. Oh, that's yeah, one, right, right. Yeah, we no, can't right. have gas stoves are the well, number one cause. Gas stoves are the number one cause of gas stove fires. <laughs> I think you would like be what's right the there, propensity or, or the the likelihood of having a gas stove fire? Extremely low. I think uh, electric stove mm -hmm. fire would be much higher than right? a gas stove fire. My brother is a firefighter, and he was a firefighter at Hill Air Force Base. And the entire time that he was there, he only had a few calls that he was actually called out on. One of them was an apartment fire. And he'd been there for like a year and a half when that actually hit. And he was so excited. He was like stoked to go on this apartment fire. And it was burning popcorn inside of a microwave. And they had to evacuate the whole building because that smoke got so bad. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lady I've had to throw away a few microwaves because of. Oh, no. She, yeah, it, it was bad. They they took out the microwave. They He's like, we put the fire out in 0.4 seconds. He's like, gone. But the mm. next fire he had was a, wa a brush fire on the side of the roadway coming into the base. And they got there and he was pissed because there was a highway trooper that was first on scene and he pulled the the, <laughs> the suppressor out of his car and was like, Shh, fire's gone. Brother's like, hey, do you see me driving down the road giving people tickets? No, you do your job. I'll do mine. Stay in your lane. And the guy <laughs> yeah, just, I just found some official... Uh, information here. Households that use electric ranges have a higher risk of cooking fires than associated with those with ga using gas ranges. Wow. And it's like 61% versus 87%, something like that. So it's it's another ploy to get people yep. to only use electricity, which the grid isn't strong enough to stand that much more demand. Right. So they can collapse the grid and shut you down whenever they want. So Dude. while we're on fire, some of the things I've actually seen, I don't know if you guys uh, ever recognize that when you start talking about something, all of a sudden your Facebook feed is full of uh, ads for it. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly enough, I bought a fire extinguisher as I shared a couple episodes ago from Costco. I got one of their uh, fire extinguishers. And, um, you know, one of the things that I started seeing now on my Facebook <laughs> is different oh, ways yeah. to put out a fire. And so <laughs> as a solution to, to some of those, if you do get a fire, one of the things you don't want to do is panic. You don't want to put necessarily, especially if it's a stove or range fire and it's got grease involved, you don't want to put water on it. You want to smother that thing. You want to make sure that it's smothered it so that it doesn't have any oxygen to it. And there's there's um, either get a fire extinguisher. There's like foam extinguishers. There's also um, blanket extinguishers that you can put on those things to get those. So one of the things I would say is if you're going to have most house fires, you know, honestly, there's the house fire. You're away from your house. You come back. Your whole house is in fire. Look, there's nothing you can do about that necessarily. Right. Um, maybe a hose, maybe, you know, maybe a fire extinguisher, but most of the time it's going to be these small, simple, quick, you know, the plug, you know, sparks and the wall lights up and that fire, you've got about a minute, if that, to get that thing out. Otherwise it's going to start engulfing the whole wall. I mean, if you, if you act fast, you can put it out pretty quickly by having a few things on hand, like, like a fire mm. extinguisher, although, you know, fire extinguisher, and then even smaller things like, like quick foam, uh, fire starter or even a fire blanket and just get those things um put out as fast as possible and teach your kids how to do it that's that's something that's critical because you know your kids in there making a gr grilled cheese sandwich before you know it the something happens and it's, it's on fire and now it's dad what do we do and you know 
if 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 you if he doesn't know what to do, you can be a bigger problem. Okay, and I think and another shot. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, pop quiz, hot shots. This is for both of you. All right. Uh-oh. What do you use to put out a tire fire? You let it burn. I uh, that doesn't put foam. it out, Shane. But yes, that's one option. I would say um, foam. Nope. Water. Just water. So right? interesting. Only water. That's the only thing that'll put out a tire fire. But According still, to the, it's still not easy though, right? Yeah, the the C <clears throat> CGCMEs or whatever. So I, I just had to take a class on this for driver safety. They're like, don't try to use your fire suppressor. Don't don't throw blankets on it. The only thing that'll actually put it out is is water, and it's because of the chemical makeup of the tires. Interesting. Foam or any other suppressant is actually going to help increase the heat, and when you increase the mm. heat, mm. it burns longer. So it's like noted. I think the same with lithium batteries too, isn't it? it just takes lots of water and not foam and such. Oh yeah, yeah. Lithium yeah. Bat- batteries is the same. But I'd be interested to find out if it's what about the lithium iron phosphate batteries? Yeah, I think that's I think it's the same. I, I heard something about a, a Tesla catching fire and it took fifty thousand gallons of water just to put the thing out, something like oh that. Some God. crazy amount of, just had to douse it for hours. But hey, I was I was thinking another aspect of this fire thing is is uh, is post SHTF, you know, when we don't have fire services, right? One of uh, the biggest risks that you know living in an urban area, um, without fire services is it's going to be fire. I mean, just think about if you're holed up in your house and you're trying to keep it safe and protect it from gangs or whoever might be trying to break in, that's a pretty good tool for them to use to get you out of your house. Right. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good, it's also, you know, if the grid is down, you might be tempted to start a fire to keep yourself warm if you run out absolutely. of other, yep. that, things of fuel. So to know how to keep your, see that safe, is but keep going mm-hmm. Shane, no you know you're you... absolutely right i love the way you're what you're where you're going with that but yeah you know and i of course i think um how am i how am i to keep my house safe from uh from that and and i think first of all is you know keeping it free of garbage because that tends to garbage tends to pile up yep. um you know post age you know when, when nobody's picking it up so uh put together a plan of how you're going to deal with your your garbage and your neighbor neighborhood garbage too um you know, potentially make a run down to the dump yourselves, you know, rather than having garbage services. But I, I love where you were going with that, Paris, is um, it, f- keep running with that. So, the, I mean, the grid's down and, you, you know, you might be tempted if, if outside isn't safe necessarily, you might be tempted to cut a piece of carpet away and, or yeah. or maybe you bring in that barbecue, that little black ones, those little ones mm-hmm. that you have, and you put that in the middle of your house. You got to be, you got to make sure that you have fire safe stuff underneath it i wouldn't even do it first of all but you know if yeah. you if that's all you got then just make sure that you're being very careful keep water close by well make uh, sure so that's that you, not all you've got too right make sure you get what yeah. you need now like a, a indoor safe have, propane heater have plenty of propane fuel there's there i mean they're getting more expensive with inflation but shoot i'd rather have 20 or 30 of those uh you know for the weekend than have to be you know starting a fire in my front room because i yeah. was it wasn't ready or prepared with that you know, one of the, um, I, I, if we want to keep going down that route, we can, but another thing I was just going to say is, is running the last couple, two episodes ago, we talked about drill for skill, you know, uh, drill the skill. And one of the things that I would recommend drilling is what happens. I mean, there's a lot of different natural disasters. There's burglary that could come, there's fire, there's earthquakes, mm-hmm. but if your family had a fire house fire and your it was at night, let's say, and your kids are asleep, would you know how to get to them? Would they know how to get to you? Would you know how to not, would they know how to get out of the house? Would they panic and freak out and just curl up in a ball? So r- running drills for different scenarios, I think is a critical part of mitigating risks. When you're, when your kids know that if, okay, if it's fire, we all know, I mean, as adults, we learned when we were kids in school, even, you know, when, yeah. when the door, you, you put the back of your hand, check to see if it's hot, touch, you know, you know, touch the handle to see if it's hot. If it is, then you don't open that door because the fire's right behind it. You know, and you go crawl to a window, you stay down low, all those different things. Are we running those things for um, for our families? And if you have like Mike Lamb or, uh, or yeah, I'm going to say Mike Lamb. He says, do you have a safety rope ladder for the second floor? I mean, if you have a two-story house, this is the kind of stuff you want to be thinking about. If you have a basement, what is what are the things there? You want to have a ladder going up. So walk around your house. Like we we have window wells right below the kids' bedrooms windows. 
So they can't just jump out because they're going to fall down those wells, right? Mm -hmm. So having well covers. Well, then you have to look at, okay, is anyone sleeping in that room below there? Mm -hmm. How are they going to get out? Are they strong enough to lift the window well covers? Mm -hmm. So you need to take all of that into consideration. You know, safety rope ladders, there's some that are good. There's some that aren't so good. You want to make sure you have one that's got the fire retardant rope. And you'll want to practice it because rope ladders are difficult. Extremely um, I, difficult. They're very difficult, especially if they now have, have, have uh, they're, they're a nylon rigid, fiber, fiber rigid. and they've got these little L-shaped anchor points so that you've got a flat step to climb down, but it's still extremely wobbly, yeah. Yeah. right? And if you haven't practiced it, and this is what we talked about two episodes ago, drill everything. <clears throat> Do it for three days straight. Practice it Monday, practice it Tuesday, practice it Wednesday, so you've all got it sunk in, and then repeat it at least twice a year going forward. <clears throat> you know, and if the plan changes, you move, reassess your home, reassess your situation, mm -hmm. and then make sure you make adjustments. Like at our house, my wife, she's responsible for my daughter. I'm responsible for my son if it happens at night. You know, if we're not, if one of us isn't home, then the other person knows that it's their job to get everybody out but it's like i have a five-year-old and a four-year-old trying to make sure they understand don't grab the doorknob it's a little harder with the four-year-old than the five-year-old the five-year-old's got it the four-year-old's like why not daddy I'm yeah because like, it'll burn <laughs> it feels fine now right but practicing those skills paris you're 100 right you've got to practice those things otherwise when something goes wrong and yes something will always go wrong in life mm -hmm. but the whole point of this topic today loss mitigation or risk mitigation is to reduce the chances or eliminate the chances of those things happening. If you want to guarantee there's no fire, make sure nothing in your world is fire is, is flammable and that there's nothing that can start a fire, but that's, that's not possible. So you have yeah, to plan for it, but don't right? be the guy that's got 15 plugs in one outlet, you know, cause yeah, that's exactly. exactly. And, and my name, my next, I moved from California. Um, I found out, three or four months after I moved that my next door neighbor, his house burned down or the three quarters of it. And it was because there was a tank. he left a tank of gas in the or tank in the garage unattended and some spark went off and lit that tank and blew the whole garage up and then burned the rest of the house. So those are the kinds of things that it's, you know, sometimes you might say, well, I'll do it tomorrow or you're, you're tired and you don't, if it's a dangerous situation like that, don't do it tomorrow. Do it now. Get it safe. Get it put away where it needs to be, and then your house doesn't burn down that night. And because I promise you, if if it was too much effort to put it away and fix it and make it right, it's going to be way too much effort to try to rebuild your house after it's been burned down <laughs> and all the hassle that that goes into. Yeah. So you know, I just typed in uh, where do most uh, house fires start? Uh, and of course, the kitchen, and then I would say uh, the garage. Yep. Um, you know, we're going to be the most common. So, uh, that's where I, I would focus first and put most of my attention and that's where I'd have a fire extinguishers as well. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, going back to, you know, we talked about the, uh, the earthquake, you know, in Turkey, you know, yeah. we live here in Utah and that's our, our biggest concern here is earthquakes, right? Uh, we definitely have a different type of construction here in Utah than, than over there. They have unreinforced masonry, uh, and, so when it earth shakes, it just stuff falls over, just falls apart. Right. But you know, we, and I assume we have much better building codes here in the U S than in second or third world countries as well. And I don't know if Turkey is a first world country by now, but, but, uh, um, I think over 3000 buildings collapsed, uh, yeah. and, and, uh, almost 300,000 people, uh, had to evacuate or without homes. There's so, a things caster that actually was casting while buildings were falling and they were running yeah. to safe spots. And then as soon as they stopped falling, they'd run back to check. Is there anyone that needs help to get out of there? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll find that video and share it on our, on our page, but you're hundred percent right. Like our building codes are completely different, but we also have things like depending on the geology of the land that you're in, like there's some areas which are going to be worse off to be in, in an earthquake. Like salt, the Great Salt Lake mm -hmm. used to cover this entire valley. It was Lake Bonneville. And so most of it, this valley is sediment. So if we have an earthquake, all that sediment's going to turn into what we call liquefaction. 
and homes are just going to sink and crash and be destroyed if they're not already mm -hmm. snapped and destroyed before. And that's where most houses, in, at least in Utah County, are being built right now because that's where the cheaper farmland you know, is. That's where the, the, all that's left. the last remaining, exactly, the last remaining parcels. So, yeah, you've got to know where you're at and what your main dangers are and, and how to prepare for them. You know, I think uh, it would be smart just buy a an RV, just buy a trailer, you know, live in that thing. No worries, you know, earthquake comes along. It's just like going down the road at 60 miles an hour. What was that earthquake? Oh, man. I feel like it was like four or five years ago. And the, the, there's like a few buildings that had like almost no damage. It was like somewhere foreign. And I'm trying to remember where it was. But they had earth bag home buildings. The school was an earth bag building. It and Japan. it was fine. There were some homes that were earth bag buildings. And they were fine. Wow. Do you remember that? Shane, was that, was that in Japan? It. Was it Japan and the, the tsunami? No. Shoot. I'm going to have to research that and find it. But it, we, we actually talked about it in one of the episodes. But it was really fascinating because it's like there are certain structures that are more resilient, right? Obviously, if you're in, a, in an RV, you know, road shakes, then, you know, depending mm -hmm. on the severity of the, of the shakes, like your RV might be fine. But like geodesic domes, fantastic the strongest structures around yeah right and then like but there's so many different things you could do it's like okay if you know your house is likely to go down what's your backup to live in mm -hmm. do you have to wait till they can rebuild or can you go you know can you go live with someone in the next city over if that's a possibility or next state over or wherever you have to go to relocate for safety because evacuation is a real possibility in those scenarios Mm -hmm. Another thing I was thinking as I watched these buildings collapse, they were like five to 10 stories. And I mean, if you're on the fifth or sixth story and you just got collapsed, your chances of survival are slim to none. And, and I think slim just left, you know? And to, so another way to maybe mitigate some risk, if you're in an earthquake zone is uh, don't rent or buy in, in a high rise apartment complex. You know, the reason why here. these you know, obviously the agenda, you know, for the globalists is to pack everybody in like sardines mm -hmm. into the cities. And so yep. they're building these high rises for that purpose. And we're buying them. We're renting them. We're, we're basically just feeding right into that narrative. So if we all stop saying, no, we, we don't want to be in that kind of a situation, you know, that's going to give you, you know, consumers have a lot more to say than we think we do. And we have a lot more say on what happens in the marketplace because that's why the market works is because people will put a product out. If nobody buys it, they stop making it. If everybody mm -hmm. buys it, they keep making it. Why are they keeping, why do they keep making these high rise apartment complex? Because people keep doing it. They keep going to, toward it. So we do have an opportunity and it, it's, nothing's ever too late, but I, you know, just be safe with yourself. If you're in an earthquake zone, don't be on the 17th floor of an, 17 floor apartment building a concrete building right yeah <clears throat> find find a safer solution find a a more uh oh, anti-fragile yeah. solution well you know I, concrete is actually pretty safe you know it's it's one of the strongest structures for earthquakes you know but it's the unreinforced you know i i pretty much guarantee that most of the casualties in in turkey have, uh from like you say paris in in the populated areas you know, where the high rise buildings yeah. are. If you're, if you're a single level home, you're, I think you're much better off. So mitigating risk that way by living in the burbs, right, is mm -hmm. probably you're much more likely to have less damage and and be able to stay in your home. I think Utah Mike has a thing. <clears throat> he was say rebar has been very good to me. <laughs> I do <laughs> love concrete and rebar. Absolutely. It's funny because the school that I went to, my first college that I went to was a community college in, in Colorado. It was uh, the letters ACC. It was Arapahoe Community College, but we called it the All Concrete College. It was a, a <laughs> ugly, concrete, huh? looked like a prison type of school, mm -hmm. but it was all reinforced concrete, and it was actually one of the best buildings to be in when something was going down. We had some tornado drills while I was there, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, just get out of that section, come into this section. Anywhere in this section, you're good." Mm -hmm. and I'm like, "What?" And it was, it was huge wide open spaces and they designed it to be more of a, a shelter for the neighborhood you know for the entire surrounding areas and it's like the, there's so much value in something strong right we we all live in these stick twig buildings hate it right? absolutely hate it two by fours hate it and we think like, about 
they say they go up fast and they're they're affordable and it's like there's more affordable options that are stronger they're temporary is what they are yeah you know and of course when we look at another you know potential threat is you know nuclear war right it could be not just nuclear war but a, a local uh explosion uh even a dirty bomb or something like that and where we've got to take shelter the best uh best structure is concrete you know ha- having earth or concrete between you i think 18 inches of concrete will do it if i think if i'm right um uh, anybody it, comment if i'm if i'm not but depends it depends on the distance right but if it's if it's uh, you are from the epicenter right? of concrete is is good and if you go less on the concrete then you have to have more on the more, dirt and soil on the earth, yeah. so i think if i remember right it was like <clears throat> three or four inches of dirt to every inch of concrete that you mm-hmm. shorten on because it's dense. Right? Yeah. but it's like yeah there's so many other solutions um so many other things like okay so if there is a nuke maybe it's a high level nuke high altitude nuke that's an emp scenario mm-hmm. right well, how do we mitigate for that mm-hmm. the entire localized grid's going to go for a little while um, Fair, low Faraday cost. bags and, and relating that to the news that I mean they were talking I mean well, it didn't end up being but they were talking to that balloon that coming from China was a potential mm-hmm. EMP mm-hmm. strike for us so that's it's something that's in the news it's something that's on the tongues and minds of, of people that this was this is real so how do we how do we prepare for that well we make sure that we have some Faraday not necessarily Faraday cages but Faraday bags we have our some of our uh, items like that ready to go and and more, even more importantly than that, I think is just have tools and other items that would do the same thing without electricity. You know, for before we had electricity, we had power tools where it was hand power tools. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, if, you know, talking if you about this, Paris, right, a drill that's a hand power tool. So if you're on YouTube, you'll see about the 27 minute mark, you got a, um, a, a hand crank drill. And that's something that. I actually, when I was looking to kind of prepare for the tools that I wanted to get, I thought, you know, if the grid goes down, I'm not going to have any way to put my, unless I'm, you know, have a solar power or solar battery battery bank, I'm really going to be without power. So I got to have some tools. So I, I got a, you know, plane, I got a, um, a, a drill, you know, all of those things that would give me the opportunity to still continue to, to, to work and do what I needed to do without, well, uh, I got saws and stuff like that. Anyways. And think about nails. Mm-hmm. because if power is out you're not going to be using your drill as often so think about nails like i have a stockpile of nails oh, nice. as crazy good, as that yeah. may sound to everyone else mm-hmm. to me it made absolute sense i've got multiple ha- styles of hammers i've got demolition tools like if i have to knock a wall out to be able to get in and out to save my kids like crowbars pry bars like flat uh, flat ones and i've got oversized ones I, the things that are going to help me mitigate but also things that are also going to help me live in a future without power but i have to be using those now to stay comfortable with them yeah and so i try to do projects from time to time that require me to use those i hadn't used a, a, a nail and hammer for a long time and guess what happened i was i was doing some small nails and i had a black thumb for a couple of weeks oh dang right I, i'd forgotten to hold the nail with my needle nose pliers when it's a tiny little thing like those types of things it's easy to forget when you haven't done it for a lot long time right but get nails like everyone talks about oh get as much duct tape as you can i'm like duct tape's not going to hold two two by fours together sufficiently to to give some strength if you use enough it will (laughs) that's the saying is if if duct tape's not work working you're not using enough thank you red green (laughs) You're gonna need a crap ton of duct tape. Yeah, like, right. Way more than nails. Zip You're gonna ties. actually be better off if you paracord, lash those things together. Like, if you have good rope, like there's so many other ways to do it. But yeah, various sizes of ropes, various sizes of chains, various sizes of connectors, lots and lots of nails. Like, I, it, my dad's a contractor, so I grew up with all these things in our house, and I just thought that was normal. And when I moved out especially when I got my own home, I was like, I need nails to do this project. I'm like, instead of buying one little box, I bought the bulk size box. My wife's like, you don't need that many. I'm like, yeah, but you never if know. I need them later, I'd rather have them. And guess what? I spent pennies on the dollar on all those nails. Cause I bought them years ago. Yeah. 
uh, Christine has a really good point. Yeah. Um, thanks for was, bringing that up. I was going to comment on it too. I'm, I'm not in your same situation, but I have a hard time throwing out anything of value as well. I've got uh, drawers and drawers of screws and everything I separate from. I don't I throw probably it have, out. I just use it. And it always comes in handy. I always use it. I have <laughs> Ziploc bags full of old screws and extra screws that I've got out of different things. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to need it. Yeah. You know, what's Which, funny is I don't, this is probably something I shouldn't stockpile. But when we were flipping furniture for a while, um, the little bags of of Desican. furniture pieces the attachments the, the swiss kits oh. or swedish kits of all the weird stuff right right from ikea and everything else like i kept a whole bunch of those so i'm like hey these these, these could come in handy mm -hmm. right but if you've got tools if you've got handles if you got things it's like if you have the space might as well keep it around i want to piggyback on a short that you did uh scott just the other day coming out of the gym <laughs> And, you know, if, if let's say an earthquake happens and your house does collapse or you're in an apartment complex and it collapses and you make it out. Now you've got an opportunity to go back and maybe I, I was watching some videos. They literally pulled, I think it was a three year old little girl or boy out of the rubble, like huge mm -hmm. concrete slabs on like collapsed over this little and a little pocket was made. That this little kid actually survived another video where this guy literally pulled i think his the, the mother had died but she was right there to give birth and the baby was born like to the guy and so in 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 an effort to be strong and have a, a physicality if you're going to go back you might have somebody that says hey i got this big beam on my leg can you lift it off so i can i can pull my leg out and, and take me to safety well if you don't know how to lift properly, if you're not strong, if you're obese, if you've not given yourself a good, strong conditioning, you're going to try to lift that beam and you're not going to be able to help the guy. Even if you have some some tools to leverage, you still have to have some strength and some conditioning. And uh, I think that's very important. That's one of the, uh, to me, that was one of the big important things about being prepared uh, is to be able to, if I have something all, over my kid, I want to have the strength and I want to know how to lift properly so I'm not going to hurt my back. And I want to be able to be the dad that lifts that thing up and over because adrenaline is, is cool. Well, yeah. There's superhuman dad moment, right? There's superhuman moments, but I want to be able to grab the right materials to create a fulcrum so that I don't hurt myself and that I can still save the person. Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. And understand too. limitations, but also like reduce the limitations. That's my goal right now is I'm really trying to reduce my personal limitations. Can I go hike 20 miles today? Yes, I can now. I can confidently say if I need to, I can go hike 20 miles. Now, can I go do a thousand push-ups? No. Will I ever need to? Probably not. But being able to, the more you're capable of doing, <clears throat> the more you're able to mitigate risks. Mm -hmm. If I need to sprint to get out of the way of something, can I do it? Or if yeah. I just need to simply walk out of the way, can I do it? Do I need to run back in and grab somebody and save them, right? Or can I push somebody you know, out of the way of a speeding train? Like, what are the things that I'm physically capable of? Can I run a kitchen grid down, right? So even if you have a lot of physical limitations, what are some of the things that you still can do? So lady next door, she probably can't go climbing through buildings to help rescue stuff, but I can put her on a, on a little cook stove. And say, hey, while we're over here fixing this stuff, can you fix this pot of stew for everybody? So yeah. that when we're done, we can have something to eat. Everybody, plays she has, the, she has the ability to do that, right? As long as she's not injured. <laughs> so look at our capacity, look at our abilities, and what can we do to improve those? That's why I'm trying to be, you know, active all the time, because I got, I got fat and lazy, and that is a huge huge area of improvement that I need to fix in my life. Yeah. And I'm, I'm small and, and skinny, so I got to work on building up a little bit of my, uh, no, it's yeah, called I'm right wiry. in the middle. <laughs> You're wiry. <Corey>. wiry. <laughs> Remember the, what was that movie with, uh, the replace is it the replacements with, uh, can tell you. it's a football saw, movie and they're all the scabs and this English guy like, wow, you're skinny. And then he goes, no, I'm wiry. That's awesome. Wiry. I, I'm not the guy that's going to lift it, but I'm the guy that can crawl in the hole to go grab yep. the kid and crawl back go. out because I'm go. small enough to do that. That's you that's can crawl along. 
I can spelunk a little easier because I got that uh, different frame. <laughs> Just oh, so you know, awesome. the correct term is caving. Caving, nice. That's the correct term. So that's a whole nother. <laughs> what is spelunking? Show. Spelunking has taken on a sexual connotation, so it's not you. Oh, well, we used to call it spelunking when you had to use ropes and rigging to climb through small, tight caves. Yeah, yeah. So it's just called caving. That's kind of oh the man, of caving instead of spelunking. Spelunking, it's a cooler word, but you know, yeah. You got to be and careful nowadays. Hopefully, it'll. Hopefully, that will will uh, go away at some point. Crap, we're gonna get flagged for like a million uses of the word. <laughs> no, spelunking. we should. No, that kind of stuff flies with with the, the perversion flies with YouTube. Right? Oh, okay. So, so we're good. No, I uh, just wanted to comment on Mike's uh, comment here. Uh, battery power tools. I think that's I think that's a sound plan because mm -hmm. uh, I think EMP is is a is a likely is, yep. is quite likely like likely possibility, and components that are not connected to the grid are going to be more robust, and especially something that doesn't have sensitive electronics. So, like our phones, uh, computers, and so forth, they have sensitive uh, chips and so forth in them that can be very easily damaged. And with the grid, the problem what happened back in uh, with uh, and I forget the uh, the 1800s uh, solar flare. I forget what that was called. But what happened? It used the the entire tele the uh, uh, the grid at the time, which was um, which was uh, telegraphs. Uh, telegraphs. Thank you. Uh, it used it basically used that as an antenna. Uh, and collected it collected that solar en energy and started fires so wow. that's what is theoreticized theoreticized now i think i used that right that our grid will be a big antenna anything con connected to it will be extremely vulnerable but mm -hmm. power tools are meant to be robust right there's no sense of electronics in it that i know of yes yeah, so i think yeah I, th I think anything not connected to the grid like that something like power tools i think that'd be a, a, a great a great solution uh, that's why you you're going to want to have effect. a battery bank, right? And then you Just got your like inverter, you got, which is a little susceptible to solar chargers. Yeah, well, we just did some posts on it. Paris and I need to get together and put a, do a video on it. I can't one, wait so. to see that one come through. I actually yeah, have the container already. Oh, yeah? Yeah, same one. <clears throat> I don't know how oh, I have box. that. Same one that you just bought. I'm like, hey, that's the one I've got in the garage. I'm I've like, seen other people use that one to make it a battery bank. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. I, I've but, been wanting, I've been wanting to build something like that, and to see you just go do it, it's got me excited. I, I, yeah, it was on my list for a long time. I just decided to do it, and and actually, you if we want to put the link into our stores we, uh, to the Amazon store in there, I've got a list of the components on there. So if you guys want to go check that out, um, no, yeah, that'd be I'm excellent to have that, that link in there, Scott. We it's can have just, it a separate separate uh, um, kit or whatever yeah uh, we've got it we've got it in there we've got a whole just, oh nice good list just for that, whole list. for that the things that are available on amazon there's a few things you'd have to get elsewhere um, there but, you go i'm uh, throwing that out there okay there you I'll go throw it out for the other channels as well yeah but it is it, we we in that list we put all the different things like we've got shane's list for that we've got our go bags and get home bags each broken down shane's paris's mine um, so you can kind of see from hearing us talk about things, you can kind of see our psyche and how we've developed our bags, how we've developed our plans. Um, and, and there's, this is the cool thing about it. Like there's no one exact way to do everything. Right. Mm -mm, yeah. And you're going to evolve as a preparedness person throughout the entire cycle and be like, I need all this stuff to maybe, uh, all I need is my Mora knife. Oh, I can do everything now. Right. I got, I got it. It's figured out. Or you I appreciate that you do the Australian possible. accent with that knife uh, example. My, uh, I, 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 well, I should have more knife. More knife yeah, Swedish. I was going to say. Is that... There we go. There we go. <laughs> Swedish chef. One of yeah, my favorites. Awesome. So, hey, Mike, uh, I was going to ask you. Uh, you say you keep your batteries protected from EMP. Um, uh, so, are you are you concerned about your batteries? Uh, I would be concerned about my my lithium iron batteries that have a battery management system they have electronics within the battery i would be concerned about that but i don't know about the battery cell itself um maybe my usb rechargeable lithium batteries but uh, i don't know about your big lithium batteries for your for your power tools i'd love to hear your comments on that i i tend to think they're on the robust side and would probably be okay but uh, the batteries with electronics within them, I would be concerned about. So, oh, I know my my watch is going to be toast when 
when we have one of those scenarios. Uh, Mike, but uh, EMP proof watches, you know, mechanical uh, and ma manual wind up yep. watches are great. Uh, watches like this little electronic circuit, you know, pedometer oh, yeah. and heart rate monitor and everything else, it's going to be gone. Yep. And I'm okay with that, right? Cell phones, gone. I'm okay with that. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. And I apologize I I in advance. If that happens uh, or when that happens, you guys won't have any new episodes of Prepper Talk ready to, to uh, listen to. So if you've downloaded all of our prior episodes onto a device and stored it in an EMP safe container, uh -huh. you can still binge stream or binge listen to all of our prior episodes. Even or I'm maybe not going to ask that of you guys after a DMP. Even, or maybe we go, maybe we get ham radios and we all get on at Wednesday at six o'clock mountain and just kind of broadcast and anybody out there, you're listening. Absolutely. Here we go. Have our own prepper talk net. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. So well, I've got a long list of, of mitigating. I don't know what kind of time we have left here, Paris, but uh, you know, a long list of things to uh, mitigate because I'm concerned about mitigating risk on. And, you know, if you think about it, prepping in general is, a practice of mitigating risk, you know, yeah, pretty is. much, pretty much everything we do, we're, we're mitigating risk the entire time. So of course, things that come to my mind is, you know, travel. I think that's a big, a big thing that, uh, uh, we need to mitigate risk on financial preparedness. That's a big thing that uh, has a lot of potential risk right now. Um, those are my minds at the moment. What do you want to talk about? <clears throat> Let me ask you this, cause this will cover a lot of them. What are the two or three biggest things that you're prepared for me that you're mitigating right well yeah financial is the number one right now okay that's my biggest concern is is the the financial system now yeah. <clears throat> meaning they change to a different system or meaning it collapses completely or meaning there's an emp and all the banks are shut down yes right correct you've taken care of three things in one, one shot. solution yep that's that's what i'm trying to point out like <clears throat> okay, what's the next biggest thing that you're worried about? Uh, the next, not worried. The next thing after that would be, um, what is on my list here? That's after you know, it's definitely financial first, and mm -hmm. then after that, it uh, probably crime, crime, okay. increased crime is probably my next one. So, right. har so hardening my own home, uh, and just just uh, learning to, uh, what being being more aware, you know, watching my back. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is I think it's a it's a really good idea right now wherever you go, grocery store, whatever, especially if it's just you know wife your wife's going shopping or whatever, just don't let her go alone. Go with two people. You know, uh, and I think that's a big risk mitigation. You know, imagine going out to your vehicle, what can happen between the store and your vehicle, especially you oh, know yeah. with things getting worse that way. Guys, be the be the be the responsible gentleman in your life. If you work with, with ladies and you're walking out your cars, especially past dark, um, do it in groups. Take them out, walk them to their cars, <clears throat> make sure that their car's safe to get in, help them out. Um, and the other thing is, like, I see videos on this all the time across pretty much every social media. People talking about how so and so started this shady character was following them inside of Target, or the shady character followed them all the way out to their car. Like, be aware of what's going on around you. It's the people that weren't aware. Are the ones that are now missing yeah another big mm -hmm. thing too is if uh if you've got a, a a wife a mom with a bunch of kids and she's at the store with like three or four little kids that's a perfect target for a child mm -hmm. predator to you know mom's distracted with one kid the other kid's running down the hall turns the corner gone mm -hmm. in fact the statistics yep. show that anybody who has a you know multiple a, a, a parent with multiple kids in tow uh, at any public location the, the risks are much higher. That's that's where these guys they'll target the person with multiple distractions, mm -hmm. and go for it. And they'll grab one of them while they're distracted with the other ones. And so, I have some friends um, that I work with that um, that are in the world of stopping these guys, and they know some of the stuff that's going on out there. And that's one of the things that they they mentioned yeah. to me. He says, "My <clears throat> sister," he said, "My sister goes out with like three or four kids." I'm like, "Don't do that. Don't go shopping with more than one. It's mm -hmm. Too much of a distraction." Yeah, that's why very we difficult. Just order our food. Like we we don't go shopping very often, at all. Like we we shop online. Like every everybody seems to have like a food delivery system now. Like Walmart, uh, Kroger, Smiths. Uh, everybody seems to have one, and it's like you can order the food delivered to your house. 
and you don't even have to go outside when the delivery guy gets there. He can just put it all on your porch. And when he's gone, then you can go out, double check to make sure it's all there. If something's missing, you let him know and they'll replace it or refund it. Like mm-hmm. if you're a mom and you're concerned about those things, simplest solution, right? Yep. Yeah. Is it is it worth risking your kids or yourself, or is it better to pay 90 bucks a year, 100 bucks a year in those fees? Because guess what? You're saving the gas money too and your time. Yeah. <clears throat> Just really quick to touch on Shane's um, financial collapse, the mitigating the risks there is if you are in debt, and you definitely want to make sure as soon as possible to budget yourself to the point where you've got some positive cash flow. Like you want to have money above and beyond your expenses that you can throw at that debt and do everything. Stop buying dumb stuff. Stop buying stuff you don't need. Get us get out of debt because if if anything uh, comes down the pipe like that, you're going to want to have cash on hand. And if, and and I would say first get your emergency fund, but don't necessarily put it all in a bank. Put your emergency fund mm-hmm. in a safe or have some cash on hand. Have at least a thousand or two dollars uh, on hand because you know right now my brother is shared with me that in Texas they had another huge um, uh, whatever they call it. Down it. again the. The, yeah, the, the, the power outage. Yeah, the power outage. Three hundred thousand right. people or something this last yeah, week. Yeah, and when the power goes out, the store's power goes out too, and mm-hmm. the and you need cash to buy stuff at the store, and so have cash on hand. And um, it's so I would say even before when, when I teach people financially speaking, when I, when I coach them, they're like, oh, I want to get out of debt. Well, don't get out of debt so fast that you don't have a reserve in case something bad happens that you have to go back into debt for. So right. get your build up your reserve first. Pay yourself first. Get yourself set first financially. Get your money. Get your gold. Get your silver. Get your food storage. Get your water storage. Get all that first, and then worry about paying off debt. But get your finances in order because you're not gonna, you know, you, you need to be set that way. Mm-hmm. And I think you're mainly talking, uh, I guess, initially about uh, revolving debt, about credit card debt. Get rid of that oh, first. Yeah. Absolutely first. That'll that'll kill you the quickest. Yeah. Uh, unsecured debt. Um, and yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah you, you can have the other thing is like cash in our current society will only go so far, right? When something really goes sideways, that cash is all useless, anyways. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a big proponent, like mitigating risk. Like, life insurance is one of the best risk mitigation tools. <laughs> As a parent, I have life insurance that also has uh, health riders. So, if I get a chronic or critical illness, I can get that money out early. Right. Mm-hmm. Or if, if something happens to my wife, we can get that money out early and it mitigates those potential losses. Yep. If I'm out for six months, a year or the gorgeous gone for the rest of my family's life, I need to put them in the best possible situation I can possibly do it. So that means a good, but in a, in a uh, inexpensive life insurance policy. That means for me, a year supply of food. That means cash on hand more than that money on hand, real gold and silver, right? I've got some of that. That's something I'm working on right now to try to improve and expand, but I've got water. I've got tools. The the sad thing about the tools, my wife doesn't know how to use a lot of them, Mm. right? So I've got to teach her some of those skills, but she can, if she needs to barter away those or my brother-in-law or someone else local that is part of our group can come use those tools, right? They can still be used. So a lot of times people think, oh, if something goes sideways, I'm just going to check out. Well, that's an option, but who's relying on you? Yeah. You're you're mitigating the risks for those people. That's, I think, the thing that a lot of people just don't even think about. They're like, yeah, if we lose the money system, screw it. Okay, well, how are you going to get something else? Do you know how to barter? Do you know how to negotiate? Build those skills. Mm-hmm. Critical. Because bartering and negotiating are going to be where it's at. If the grid goes down, you're going to need to be able to determine how to really make a deal with somebody else. You know, I think in the last couple of minutes, if you guys are okay with it, I would like to just talk about, you know, earlier somebody said, we're going to have to slap an 18 and over sticker on this, but don't we, didn't we need an 18 or older sticker for the Grammys on Sunday this last week? Mm. Um, That was ridiculous. I think that one of my big concerns is that, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man who believes in Jesus Christ and has a faith in him and, and that whole, uh, that his kingdom will come and, and that, uh, and it, it scares me to death that my kids are growing up in a world where they can watch public television and see something like 
Sam Smith do a satanic ritual dance and, and gyration and whatever else they had that world they did. I mean, there's, we got all kinds of people all over social media blowing it up. This is evil. This is wicked. Like CBS even got is thank goodness. They got a bunch of, you know, hopefully Christians and, and conservatives get blew up their phone lines and just said, look, this is not appropriate. So to and me, none, nonetheless sponsored by big pharma as well. Yeah, brought to you by you know the the jabbers of all jabbers and who just yep. got Project Veritas, um, <clears throat> and I love that. So, I you know mitigating risks of spiritual um, warfare are something that's also very critical. And are you paying attention to what your kids are watching on their phones? Are you paying attention to what you're watching on your phone? Are you paying attention to what you're allowing for entertainment in your home? Are you paying attention to the music they're listening to, the things that they're talking about with their friends, the jokes that they give? Are you paying attention to those things? Because spiritual warfare and preparedness is, if not more important, just as important as um, anything else will do. And helping you, uh, helping our kids, like, here's the thing is my son came to us one day and he says, dad, I'm having some trouble. I, I feel like I'm getting bullied. He's got some anxiety. He's got some panic attack stuff. And I had a, developed a relationship with him such that he could feel comfortable coming to me for those things. And, and we did, my wife and I talked to him. We spent about an hour and a half with him. And then we determined, you know what, you might need some counseling. So we got him a counselor. Like do your kids trust you enough that they could come to you with those concerns or are they out there, you know, cutting themselves, getting in with gangs, doing things that they shouldn't be doing because you're not giving them the atten time and attention that they need to have the love that they need. That's your job as a parent. Your job as a parent is to help them make sure that they are growing up as, as healthy, psychologically healthy, physically, and eventually citizens of the, of the country that can continue our community and what our values as a community are, and especially in America. So hopefully you guys are um, paying attention to what's going on in your house. And uh, my daughter came to us the other day. She said, dad, I'm, I, I got rid of Snapchat because it just wasn't going the direction I wanted anymore. And I'm like, amen. You know, that's my, she's an, my 18 year old daughter said that to me. And I'm like, I'm so grateful that my daughter can self-regulate. See, I, I built a, I hope I did anyway, my wife and I on purpose, we, we, it was our purpose to build an environment where our kids and our family could talk and communicate about hard things. And we yeah. knew that we would all love each other no matter what. And that's critical. I think just to mitigating these spiritual risks and these spiritual problems that are going to be absolutely coming at us like a, like a freight train over the next little while. One of the cool things is, is like, you'll, you'll be just going along your way and you'll have a thought to do something to get better prepared in a certain area. Or like something you hadn't thought of to do pops in your head. That's from God, you guys. Yeah. He's like giving you a hint. He's mm -hmm. like, the answer to problem seven is on page two. Yeah. And here wink, it is. Wink, nudge, nudge. Go study. Go do this. Right. That's the coolest thing. It's like we, we don't come to this earth with an instruction guide when we're born, but we can get guidance from our heavenly father. That's why he gave us the scriptures, the prophets, right? But then also he gave us these things with, unless we've lost them or maybe weren't born with them, but knees, you get down on them and you start talking to them. Yeah. It's like we push the buttons on a phone to connect with our friends and family. If you really want to connect with God, you got to, you got to get meek and humble, lowly of heart, get on your knees and ask away, tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you're grateful for them. And then ask him for direction. And you'll be surprised because, and maybe you won't be surprised, but he will answer and he will give you ideas. And he will send you information. And sometimes he'll put someone in your life that's going to help you with that solution. Yep. Hope kind of like Prepper Talk Radio. <laughs> hey, what do you know? Which really, we can blame all of this on Shane. I was, I was minding my own business at a Comic-Con when God's like, hey, why don't you do this for prepping? After I thought it'd be cool to do this for prepping. And then I realized that was God. And then I made a phone call and got a hold of Shane. And then Shane was an amazing resource and became an amazing friend. And then all of a sudden Paris pops up on the, on the grid, like, Hey guys, I'm looking for a preparedness expo. And we're like, we're the guys for you. And he's found the podcast and, and became our friend and then moved to Utah. And it's like, Hey, sweet. And now we're here to help you guys. Like, it's divine design. It is. Shane, you're on mute. 
Oh, yes, I am. I mean, I got some noise. Sorry, but yeah, pretty cool story, definitely. You know, yeah. everything is by design. God's plans, but so are Satan's. He's trying to do stuff at the same mm. time. So make sure you're tuning into the right location and you're turning off the shows like the Grammys so you can tune in to God. Mm-hmm. We all have things in our lives that are distractions. They could be addictions. They could be uh, depression. It could be an anxiety. It could be a sickness. It could be, there. Could, I mean, there's millions of things. You might be su- sucked into, I don't know what the big popular video games are right now. And if you are, you're probably not listening to this. But like there, there could be a million different things that could be your crutch in life right now. Take my job. My job is my yeah, job. Your job. How many of us are workaholics, especially with the economy, mm-hmm. the way it is? It's like, pfft. yeah. Get going on something that's going to help find solutions for these. Like, I've seen so many of you commenting, you know, debt eliminating debt is number one right there up with, with my religion. You know, getting this done or getting that done, right? We take care of some of those things and we listen to God telling us what to do. It's going to it's going to snowball effect and fix more things for us. Yeah. And I can I can pro, I can I can testify to that because that's how it's been working in my life. Yep. I, I, I had a goal to get better prepared years and years ago, and I was able to accomplish that goal. I had an even bigger goal to get more prepared, but help other people get prepared. And we've helped over 36,000 people get prepared through PrepperCon and another 10 to 12,000 easily through this show. You know, like you don't know the impact you're going to have by getting prepared and how it's going to help other people. So trust in God, do what he inspires you to do and just keep moving forward. Amen. Any last remarks, Shane? I'm just typing a little message here. There we go. You look excited about it, too. You're like, mm. well, some things I've learned. Like oh, Pac-Man. Yep. Uh, Pac-Man. I think we've talked. Program and control. Yep. Pac-Man. Yeah. One of the first games that, um, and I'm not, I'm going to slaughter this, but one of the first games that really started to get us into the matrix, right? Pac-Man. So, it's been happening when, you, for a when long your eyes time. open up, man. Mike Lamb, Mike Lamb, Lamb, Mike. When your eyes get open, man, they they don't shut. Yeah, so you can't close them back again. Dig into that one. Do a little more searching on that one, and you you might just you might eyes might just go buggy eyed on that one. Well, I got sucked into Pong before that ever existed, <laughs> and so I'm like, what did that stand for? I don't. I, great. There's probably I don't, about, I don't know about that a one. rabbit hole for Pong now that's going to ruin my childhood. <laughs> exactly and if you haven't ruined your childhood yet just keep watching the world and it'll get ruined soon yeah, seriously it's, it's scary yeah. all right well let's let's close it out we're 40 we're about an hour actually this is a fantastic episode i feel like we've got a lot uh, and your comments have been fantastic thank you so much yeah, i'm going to yeah, just yeah. really end it um with this christine's comment here you guys are great thank you so much we think you're great and so thank you for being on the show with us um, we're going to let you guys get back to your, to your night and, uh, but make sure you visit our website before you go, um, get off, uh, offline and, uh, go sign up for our free services there, our free, um, email service. And then also make sure that you go to our Facebook group and join there, hit like, and subscribe before you leave. And remember, whatever you do, stay ready minded and stay focused on God, family, and country. And uh, we're going to need more like-minded people here pretty soon. And it's going to be critical for us to have them build this community. So I'll get out of your way. I'll get out of the way and and, uh, stay ready-minded, guys. See you next time. See you next week. Thanks.